Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And I'm like rushing. <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing this video. I have piles of collab videos to do, but I just, I couldn't not do this. As of filming this, this is still available. It is the Art Impressions Stamp Timber Limited Edition collab. Hopefully I get this uploaded and posted before it fully sells out because it did come out two nights ago, something. Anyway, I couldn't resist. I'm a huge fan of Art Impressions and I've their collabs for Stamp Temper are always some of my favorites. Hence me making this card, filmed it, moving as fast as I possibly can like a crazy person. I will also link to the Art Impressions line in the description box below my video as well as my blog because they've got so many amazing stamps and you know punny sentiments and all that sort of thing i just i love the line love it and yeah that's all i have to say because i am trying to do twenty-five thousand things at once as always and stay tuned because i will have of course more collab videos coming as they're released and my other videos and lives on sundays at 2 p.m central still planning on doing that just it's fun it's fun it's chaos is what it is, but I got this card made and we'll just see how long the set lasts. <laughs> but like always, links will be below. The limited edition collabs will not be restocked. They are part of the Stamp Timber excitement, but there's always so many other um, images and especially with art impressions like these like sassy ladies. There's so many of them that have been released over the years and I love them. I love all of them always. So yeah, links will be below, link to my blog post, social media, all the things, and keep watching and I will show you how I made this card. Alrighty, so I took the main image from the stamp set and I've got my Misty with one of my waffle flower grip mats in it and some of Simon's Smooth White 120 pound cardstock. And I'm gonna stamp this image with Simon's Intense Black Ink, a good alcohol marker friendly ink. And the other thing I noticed as I was, I was just gonna stamp this image and then I was like, where's the candle? Oh, it's a separate stamp. So you can choose whether or not you wanna stick that like in the apple or not, which I thought was really cute. So stamp the image lined up the candle because I was like, yeah, I'll just make this into a birthday card because there's some good little birthday sentiments in here, etc. So lined that up, stamped that as well. And then for the coloring, I kept it super simple. One, because rushing. And two, that's another thing I love about um, the Art Impressions line is their packaging has the images already colored and I've talked about this before when I've done videos using the art impressions images I pretty much always follow the packaging it I, and I, again I like a broken record I've said this I love when companies and brands think things out ahead of time include little guides labels on stencils etc etc I love that the less I have to think I love being creative and coming up with my own thing but you know especially when you're in a rush it is very, very nice when things are done for me. <laughs> so that's literally what I did. I just, I followed the image. And that's another um, thing I love about art impressions is not only are the, the images colored, but I like using them too for, um, I follow the, the, like where the shading and everything is. Cause I've talked about this with my coloring that I don't generally pay that much attention. You know, I don't really do like light sources, all that sort of thing. I just kind of color however, which is fine. It is fine. But it is nice too sometimes. It's like, ooh, I would never have thought to put like a bit of shadow there or to do it like this, et cetera, et cetera. And so then I just kind of follow along and it's like, oh yeah, I like that. I like where that little bit of shading is. And again, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. So the only thing I really did slightly different um, is, yeah, I'm going to add some white gel pen to her, her plaid shirt. <laughs> really like I, w I was like oh maybe I'll do some different colors and I was like no don't have time don't have time to think don't have time to do nothing I'm just I'm just following the packaging for the most part you know so I used um 
yeah, various Copic markers. I showed the lids all here on screen. This is all just sped up in editing, but again, it didn't take that long, thankfully, thankfully. So did all of the little um, bits and doodads and whatever, you know, adding little bits of definition and stuff. Again, things I probably wouldn't have thought of on my own, like adding the little bit of lines here and there to the basket. And then I brought out my white gel pen and again, followed the packaging for the like highlights on the apples. But then I decided to use it to add the the like plaid detailing to her shirt, which I was like, ooh, really liked that. It just gave it that little extra something, you know? And then a little bit on her shoes, because why not? Why not? And then I fussy cut this. These sets never come with wafer dyes, which is fine. This was super, super easy to fussy cut. I used my still oldie but goodie favorite fussy cut and scissors, which are just these little cutter bee scissors that I have had for, I don't even know how many years. And I've talked about this before too. I have more than one pair because they do all these things. They grow legs and they walk off. So it's always good to have an extra pair. But yeah, I actually included, usually I don't ever include the fussy cutting in my videos because 99% of the time the, the, the image and I'm holding it right in front of my face. <laughs> So I'm not on camera screen, but this time I was like, wow, I actually managed to mostly stay on camera. So I just follow around. I move the paper more than the scissors. And I mentioned this in a previous video. I have a very old video on my channel, like fussy cutting stamped images. And I get old, like way back when in the very beginning, you can go look at that. I think I, I think I explained how I did it. I just remember doing that video and it was like, it's over 10 years old. Anyway, Last little bit to her for my little embellishments. I used my Midas Touch Aqua Shimmer Pen. This has gold sparkle in it. It's very subtle, but I added it to the flames of the candle and to her earrings. And I'll show at the end with my little flashlight. Um, again, it's subtle. You can see it better in real life, but it just, you know, you guys know I got to have a little bit of bling bling. So I did all that, set that aside. For my background, I have some Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And the Simon Says Stamp Layering Apple Stencil Set. I've done a video using this set. I did, um, I think they were teacher theme cards. And I'll hopefully remember I'll link to that at the end of this video as well, if you want to check that out. But I've also said, I there's something about oxide inks on Desert Storm cardstock that's just one of my favorite things to do. So I have my big waffle flower grip mat, the Nina Desert Storm cardstock, and the... Um, base of that stencil and I used candied apple distress oxide ink and one of my paper pouncers and then I grabbed my smaller grip mat because I don't have two big ones normally I would you know wipe off the mat and just kind of flip back and forth I've shown that in a bunch of videos but I didn't have time for that <laughs> so I just grabbed my smaller grip mat stuck the card base in there this is going on the inside of the card and without using any more ink just le what was left on the pouncer as well as on the stencil and a very light hand, like I'm barely tapping it, which creates a textured effect, which I'm fine with. I'm more than fine with that. Like it just gives it a little extra something, but that's going to go on the inside of the card. So I don't want it super dark because I'm going to write over that. So then the next layer of the stencil, line that up all over the Desert Storm piece and I'm using Lumberjack Plaid Oxide Ink applying that a bit heavier um it'll be much more subtle if you wanted a really big difference you could use like aged mahogany that's in fact it before lumberjack plaid came out i would have used aged mahogany but lumberjack plaid is just oh, chef's kiss live but whatever look you're sort of going for and then same thing stuck this stencil on the inside of the card and without re-inking the pouncer anything and just very light little taps added that to the inside as well. So I've got just that fun um, definition from the stencil. And then the next um, layering stencil in this set is the little stems. And for that, I used Walnut Stain Oxide Ink. And then I'm gonna speed this up, like even extra faster than I did it, even though I'm like, I was rushing. And I don't mean this in a horror, like, you know, I chose to do this video. No one's making, forcing me to do any of these videos. I just, the idea was in my head and it was kind of one of those things where it's like, I just, I need to make it and get it out of my brain and just be done with it because it was bucking me. I had this, you know, art impression set sitting here since it literally just arrived, put, like right on top, right in front of my face. And I was like, I need to, I need to do it. I just, I love it. 
<laughs> so got her done. And then I use peeled paint for the little leaves. Finish that. And then of course, I'm going to add splatter. Since I'm making this into a birthday card, it was the perfect excuse to like, ooh, I'll add shimmer splatter. <laughs> I would have used it anyway, but that's the thought process. So I'm using un Unraveled Distress Mica Stain Spray. Oh, one of my faves. I am loving this one. And I've mentioned this before. I bought backups of this one because I, mm, it's so pretty. So shook it up really, really well to, you know, disperse all that mica into the spray. And then I just stick it on a palette, take my fan brush, started light. And then I just went all out. I was like, just cover it, cover the entire background. <laughs> so it's, it's all shimmery and uh, love it. I, I can't, I can't with this, you know, he used up every little bit on my palette there, just covered it. And again, I'll show at the end with my flashlight, you can see the shimmer. And then just because more is always more and why not? I took some white gouache, put that on my palette. I had cleaned off my fan brush, added a bit of water to thin out the gouache and splattered this. This will dry back and be much more subtle, but it still just gives that extra, that extra bit of texture that I just love. So splattered that all over this background and then um, set that aside to dry. And then I grabbed some scraps of cardstock, some green leaf cardstock and some schoolhouse red cardstock. And I'm gonna stamp um, a couple of the sentiments from the set. And I wasn't thinking, and I started with white pigment ink and I knew it was gonna be a bad idea because these sentiments are very, um, very detailed because they're just little sentiments. And white pigment ink is not gonna give you, like it's harder to see if that makes sense like it's just too much so I immediately wiped off my stamp and went with clear pigment or clear embossing ink and the first sentiment I stamped on the green I pressed too hard and I lost all the definition I could tell as soon as I put the embossing powder over it but my brain stopped <laughs> paper has two sides so I flipped it over added the anti-static powder tool stamped the sentiment again and didn't press so hard and then I coated those sentiments with uh, detail white embossing powder. Gonna melt those with my heat tool. Once these are melted, give them a few seconds to cool back off. And then I can wipe off the excess with um, my anti, my little cloth or whatever, the excess anti-static powder. And then the red cardstock sentiment, I die cut with a circle. And the other one I die cut with one of Simon's sentiment label wafer dies. So I got those dies just taped into place with just little bits of washi tape so that they don't move when I run them through my die cut machine. And then after I die cut them, I use the little corner piece from the sentiment labels, the larger one, tape that into place and then ran that through my die cut machine as well. So it kind of created a little banner. And then my background is dry. So I trim that down so it'll be slightly smaller than my card base. So I trimmed it down to like four inches by five and a quarter. And then I pulled out some Baker's twine from my stash, of course. Wrap that around the um, card front. Use my reverse tweezers as always to help me, you know, hold that in place while I tied this in a bow, fiddled with it a bit back and forth. And then um, remove the tweezers, tighten that, remove the, or cut off the excess of the baker's twine. And then my little lady here, I'm going to pop her up with some foam squares for one, for a bit of dimension and two also to, um, I placed her like where I'm going to put her on the card. So I know where to avoid with the foam squares so that the, the um, baker's twine will just go right underneath, you know, and not create weird little bumps or anything like that. So got the foam squares in place, removed the backing, and then popped her onto this card front. And then for the um, little sentiments, the one I used a uh, little piece of Big Mama foam tape, popped that into place, flipped over the card front, trimmed off the excess, and then the circle, I just used thinner little foam squares so I could kind of tuck that in so that the card says happy birthday to one fine apple. <laughs> and then hope your day is apple loots, apple absolutely wonderful you guys know i love punny sentiments you can just you can't go wrong with them for serious <laughs> so i took yet another sentiment from that set and stamped it on the inside with verse fine claire nocturne ink and it says you might be a year older but on the bright cider you're still a goddess love it love it so the card front 
I adhered to the card base with, again, Big Mama foam tape so that it gets popped up with that little bit of dimension. And then, as always, I had matching bling, uh, some Studio Cadia Moss Green Pearls. Just kind of sprinkled those throughout this card, just wherever I saw fit. You know, I was just like, oh, it'll look good here, one here, one here. How about three more here? That's kind of the thought process, honestly. So <laughs> I adhered those into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. Once those were adhered, this card is complete. I had so much fun making it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm literally like, did I get it up in time? Is the set sold out yet? Oh. But again, there's links to other um, art impression set in the, like the whole line in the description box below the video because I highly recommend you check it out if you're not familiar with them because they have so many, so many good sets. Love it. And yeah, shimmer and sparkle and apples and craft cardstock and oxide inks. And I just, I had fun making this. So again, Links will be below in the description box, a link to my blog post, etc, etc, all the things. Thank you all so, so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, the interaction legit helps tons and I very much appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't, we're getting close, we're getting so close to 100,000, which is insane to me. I love it. But yeah, I will see you all very, very soon in the next video.